Welcome back to Cryptolytics, giving you a fresh take on crypto analytics. And this is your crypto recap, where I cover some of the latest crypto developments. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so here we are in the exact same place we were the last time I did this video. Although admittedly, we did just go through a weekend. Um, and if we're looking on a weekly chart, then yes, we probably haven't really done that much for Bitcoin, but altcoins have done some interesting things over the weekend. So we'll cover a couple of those in today's video. First thing I wanted to cover, which I thought was kind of interesting, was currently the BTC price is above the highest six monthly candle close. So that's each one of these candles being six months of price action. We have never closed a candle above this level here, which is about 46K. And obviously, as I'm sure you well know, we are above that right now, sitting at around 51K. So we've got a few months still, like four months or so to close the candle up here. So, I mean, you know, a lot can happen in four months, a lot can happen in two days. You know, there are weeks where nothing happens and we have weeks where months happen, right? <laughs> as the old adage goes. So, yep. I mean, price has been doing very well for Bitcoin, that's for sure. So we'll have to see, you know, what kind of precursor we need to sort of move up to the next stage or start a corrective move. Something I thought was kind of interesting is that the ETF aggregate flows since the Bitcoin spot ETFs is on the up and up and up. And what's suffering? Well, gold. It seems like a lot of people are pulling their money out of gold, which is an inflationary asset and it's old school and it's clunky. You know, if you wanted to take your gold internationally, it's not as easy as taking a 12 word seed phrase right and it's also limited supply there's no ceo there's no one to that controls the supply or the price like there is the case with gold and you know if for some reason they struck this huge gold vein tomorrow well that's an immediate inflation of supply but also it's the new shiny thing i suppose so yeah we're getting quite a few inflows versus gold which is having significant outflows comparatively as per previous cycles i have to admit that price action has been moving a little differently so what if we create some slightly different projections for how price will go? Well, Colin Talks Crypto has decided to post what looks to be like a moon boy chart, like certainly looks like a moon boy chart, but that's our path to $1 million, right? And this goes past 2033. So you have to admit that that's, uh, that's not too crazy. In fact, the $1 million Bitcoin mark, he's got marked out at around 2035. I think that's very realistic, honestly. But when you look at it like this, it just looks like some meme coin, but obviously time horizon is quite important to factor in so if yeah we, we might end up getting some sort of parabola like this at some point at the end of the day i mean this is 2011 barely looks like a blip on the chart compared to what's yet to come we had a spike up last night and that took out a massive wall of liquidations on the liquidation heat map so that generally is like a, a sign of just basic liquidity hunting so that price magnetizing towards these high liquidity zones, taking out that liquidity and then just reversing essentially. So maybe 51 is next. It's not actually on this chart, but we actually did get a dip down into this area. So that means that liquidity was taken too. So there you go. We're just ping ponging between high liquidity nodes on the liquidation heat map. Something I thought that was pretty crazy was that open interest data on all coins is at a yearly high with funding rates overwhelmingly positive across all coins, which means that people are majority long at the moment. This can be a precursor for some vicious moves. And unfortunately, the path of max pain at the moment is down. Saying that though, normal liquidity trading stats have been less helpful since the ETF and flows picked up and here is our one year of open interest and this is all coins this is on coinalize and we can see here we have 34 billion in open contracts right now across all coins that's a lot so again generally high open interest is a precursor to high volatility so we'll have to see if we get any wild moves over the coming days if we do then there's good reason for it and this would be one of them pretty funny the old reverse kramer etf bitcoin's up 112 percent since Kramer told investors to sell 11 months ago. So I'm sure you've heard of Jim Kramer before. And if you're watching this channel and you haven't heard of Jim Kramer, then that just goes to show that TradFi is dead. But I'm sure you all know this guy. And that's not all, you know, like that's not the only call that he made. And I still find this amusing to this day. So he doesn't even, he called it Cardanzo and Solano. <laughs> 
even further back than this, but back on the 8th of June, he said, I've had it with Sol Soldano, which I'm guessing was either Solana or Cardano or both maybe, I suppose. And we actually did fall, but now look, ever since then, we're not there right now, but we peaked out at 523% move to the upside from his uh, amazing calls. So that's the reverse Kramer ETF, right? <laughs> As in anything he says, you just do the exact opposite and uh, you're probably going to make it. <laughs> in Solana news, we have a new partnership with Filecoin. We've got Anatoly Yakovenko here giving a big ups to Filecoin and Triton One, who are an RPC node. And here's Filecoin's official posts on the integration plans. And again, so that's decentralized storage solutions. And there's a, another coin that has kind of suffered as a result of it. Maybe people over panicking, but that would be Shadow, also known as Genesis Go. So Frank here is giving some perspective on this and I haven't sold any of my Shadow. In fact, I've been buying more since the price has come back down since it's just been going up and up for so long that it kind of needed a breather and finally getting it. So Frank says, first, nothing file coin does takes away from shadow just like shadow doesn't take away from filecoin we have tremendous respect for their team and platform second project yellowstone by triton one in partnership with filecoin isn't news they've been talking about this for months third there are no highlander-esque storage wars happening in web3 <laughs> whereby there can be only one anyone portraying it is giving you incredibly bad takes i mean think about all the file storage that we have we've got dropbox Box, Google Drive, iDrive. I mean, should I keep going? OneDrive, I mean, I won't. But if Web3 and or Solana ecosystems can sustain the existence of one storage platform, then everyone's bags are in trouble because that would mean Web3 is much smaller and further away from mainstream adoption than we think. Also, at least from a price appreciation perspective, you know, I'm coming at it from the uh, DGEN's perspective, the shadow market cap is significantly lower than Filecoin. So it has more price appreciation potential. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's my hot deck. <laughs> so I'm not aware of any dupe staking just yet. I guess there is if you put it into governance, but there are at least 19 projects that want to use Jupyter Exchange LFG Launchpad. I mentioned one last video, which was Clone, and there are 18 others at least, as long as Clone's part of this 19. Speculation is that dupe holders might get airdrops for some of these upcoming potential projects. So that would be pretty cool. And some incentive not to jeet your dupe, <laughs> which is uh, what is one of the reasons why price has been relatively suppressed. However, we're seeing some nice price action in Jupiter. So we did form a lower high here, but we're putting in higher lows as well. So we're creating a wedge pattern. We did break out of this trend line that I drew in. Doesn't really mean anything just yet. We also have a breakout of the four hour super trend. I think the main thing to get above is this structure high here, but this is definitely a good sign. It's looking like some of the selling has waned a bit. And like, you know, when you look at other coins that have been airdropped, where they go through these lengthened sell-off periods, well, Jupiter's not even very old yet. We're talking about 18 days almost 19 days which is not very old at all let's be honest so we still could have some sideways some small grind we might not get anything crazy this trend line might not mean anything which is highly likely because it's pretty new but again it's one of these things i mean if you're a trend line trader then you're probably looking at buying here and then if you are a horizontal support and resistance trader you're waiting for this structure to be broken that's two and then if you're an indicator trader, well, I mean, I don't know, there's like thousands of indicators out there, so I can't tell you <laughs> what you're looking at. But at least from these two perspectives, uh, and third, if we, if we consider the super trend, for example, we are looking pretty good. So let's hope that Jupiter starts to actually make some moves to the upside. Staying in the Solana ecosystem, we have MarginFi looking to make their own decentralized stablecoin. If you want a reminder of what that is, Solana already has a few like UXD and a few others, but I think with something like MarginFi, um, collateralizing it with liquid stake tokens would be pretty cool. But a collateralized stablecoin is something like UST by Terra Luna. Sorry if that triggered anyone out there, but uh, you know, I had my own <laughs> crazy time with Luna and Anchor Protocol, which is where I put a lot of my stable coins. But anyway, I think that with any decentralized stable coin that is collateralized by other assets, we need to see that it works and that there isn't any potential for death spirals or anything like that. So according to MarginFi YBX, which is what the ticker will be, which is a bit crazy. But anyway, I kind of like this because it doesn't mention US dollar or anything like that. But you know, I think it's kind of good for the multipolar world. And you know, I'm guessing it will be pegged to the US dollar anyway so whatever 
YBX will be a radical new take on what Solana needs from decentralized stablecoin. It's more than what you're expecting, apparently. Well, I am only expecting a collateralized stablecoin that is decentralized. So let's see how much more it is. YBX will be collateralized by LST liquidity in Marginfly. Other LST partners like JitoSol, MSol, BSol, and more will also be eligible to collateralize new YBX Mint. So these are all liquid stake derivatives of Solana that bake in using a rebase token style the yield from staking into the actual price itself. So if you looked at Judo Sol Sol, you would see that the price would constantly be going up versus one Sol because all of the yield is being baked into price. And it's using this concept as the collateral underpinning the stablecoin because the stablecoin requires collateral. Solana DeFi is almost completely reliant on USDC as a stablecoin right now. That's a problem. And yeah, it kind of is. We did have a DPEG last year. So even they've mentioned it here, USDC DPEG just last year. USDC is completely centralized and keeps all of the yield to themselves those greedy greedy mofos <laughs> YVX will transfer yield from products like LST and yield from MarginFi and MEV rewards. So MEV is maximum extractable value, which is essentially where something like, for example, JitoSol will hop around from validator to validator to get the maximum potential yield from staking. Rewards from LSTs into the hands of YBX holders. Yes, an inflation resistant stablecoin. Well, that's interesting indeed. I'm guessing it's pegged to a dollar. I'm not really sure yet, right? We haven't seen anything like that, say, mentioned. We're tremendously excited to start rolling out YBX to Solana users everywhere. So LST is a, another liquid stake derivative of Solana. So again, if you're holding Sol and you want to get staking yield and MEV rewards akin to Jito Sol, then this is one option as well. I actually don't have any at the moment, so I might throw some that way and put it into MarginFi because I have just Sol in MarginFi that I'm collect that I'm using to farm points for the airdrop. So anyway, speaking of airdrops, the SolWorks airdrop checker has a update where it shows you your current USD value for your airdrops, which I think is really, really cool. So I think if you've ended up selling your airdrop or something to that effect and you want to see what it's worth now, or if you've rotated some of your airdrop into other coins and you're curious to know if that would have been better if you just held onto it, well, you can come and you can put your addresses in and see these are some of my wallets. I just gave an example, um, which, you know, I've got like the Pith, Jito, Wen, Jupiter, just the standard ones really. So you can come and check it out. So so you can go to Jia Solworks, Jia, J Z H E is his name. That's Chinese. So that's why I'm pronouncing it like Jia. Is that how you pronounce it in Chinese? And then you got Sujiko, which is Japanese. So whatever, this guy's multilingual. <laughs> um, yeah, new UI, which is just like about, seems about the same. And yeah, just the fact that it shows you USD values is really cool. So you can see like Jito is like around, worth around 11,800 now. I sold it a bit higher than that, but I, I kept some of my Jito. But anyway, whatever. I I still hold most of my airdrops. Hith, for example, still holding that as an airdrop. I'm pretty sure this is Oracle to the price currently. Uh I haven't checked again since doing this, so I guess if I check again, we'll know that the price is Oracle. Maybe it's Oracle to Bith. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was cool. I mentioned a that trading strategy on the 12-hour chart for Solana. Well, it's currently in a short, which Again, as I mentioned in this post where I posted the, because I do prefer to be transparent in this post, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that I I have not sold any of my spot holdings, but almost a thousand sold. I have not spot sold any of it. All I'm doing is trading on Drift and um, using some of my Drupe as collateral and USDC and a bunch of other assets as collateral or cross collateral to open positions on Drift. And for the most part, I'm using it to farm points for the Drift protocol call airdrop so i don't expect this to be a winning trade because look at this we're in a pretty strong uptrend here i am trying to short this it seems kind of silly right especially because when you look at price action we have not come down below closed convincingly below it and come back above we have a look at price right now for Solana, we have ourselves a flip of the Hakanashi super trend and a small recovery. Admittedly, this did happen outside of normal trading hours. So whether this means anything is up for debate, but nevertheless, I'm currently in a short. I'm at break even currently because I shorted on the signal, which was right here. And I added my short at $14 and I've got one more ad here at $18. And above that, I'm well, 
at that point it will be a flip of the trade and it will be long so that would have been a loss so and i've got stop loss up here that's like a, i don't know moon or doom if something went crazy i've got a stop loss in just in case but i think it should be fine yeah we had this big bounce on the weekend right so we we touched the again this this line here is an average two range line but we touched the line bounced straight off it pretty aggressively came back down bounced off the line again so we're kind of just like slowly bouncing until this breaks or this goes up and i, I still think that these are two pretty highly probable paths we kind of did get this where it came back in but instead of bouncing just up the line here we actually came back up so anyway actually didn't touch the 21 ema for the dailies and another trade that i've got open in drift as well is a bitcoin short now it's just weird me talking about shorting i'm still really bullish overall but um these are short-term trades so these aren't sort of really long-term positions essentially but yeah i'm just seeing how this goes because yeah like the last shot was dreadful like that was my average open position in there and it stopped out but you know generally it's pretty good like at one point this strategy was 92 percent win rate since the start of 2023 currently it's 87 percent win rate i think that's pretty good and i don't mind taking the risk since the probabilities are in my favor so this is the pivot surge and it uses the cumulative volume index and detects high shifts in delta in the cvi to then put in top and bottom signals on to the cosmos ecosystem so we have our first airdrop confirmation for dym stakers so there you go hopefully you've been staking your dimension if you haven't i did a video you'll find a link to it above on how to buy it from the solana ecosystem if you don't have it and you want to get it over to the cosmos ecosystem now that might have changed a little bit since i did the video but i think overall it's probably about the same there's a few steps unfortunately i mean you could probably buy it on an exchange and withdraw it if you can but if you can't buy it on your exchange then that video will probably come in handy for you and it won't be helpful right now if you haven't done it yet but there'll be plenty more airdrops i'm pretty sure so according to a post avail project has a mystery announcement during their event in ETH denver on february 26 and he's saying hmm, i wonder if that's a possible announcement of the mainnet with some speculation on dym stakers and their reply was oops busted however uh, I mean, about which one? Is it both or is it just one? They didn't really specify. So is it just about Magnet or is it about Magnet and Dimension Stakers? Who knows? If you want to participate in more airdrop farming for Avail, other than just doing the DYM staking, there's not a lot you can really do that's very useful. Avail is kind of like part of the whole like Celestia, you know, modular blockchain thesis where the different tasks for a blockchain start to get broken up into small, smaller tasks like data availability and whatnot. And Avail is also sort of part of this where they just want to do, I think, one specific component. So it's very similar to Celestia. Avail uses the CEZK technology, otherwise known as Validity proofs celestia relies on optimistic mode of operation which simply means the data is true as long as there is no evidence of fraud so yeah it's uh it's very similar you can see avail and celestia with celestia using tendermint and they've called this babe and grandpa i don't know whatever code names huh this might be a little bit biased but they seem to think that their decentralization is better than celestia's and they have validity proofs whereas celestia does not it's also the eigen layer da and the dac as well uh i can repost this if you want let me know in the comments below if you want me to repost this on my x page and i can do that for you if you're interested otherwise this is just some steps you can go through to participate in the test net to then hope maybe get more of an airdrop so that's just something that you could do if you wish but i found this one to be kind of annoying and clunky so i sort of got into it and got a fair bit into it and i had some issues with the discord wasn't really working so i was like i'm not doing this i'm just staking dimension so that's pretty much all I care for. As for other projects or DYM stakers, we have some confirm and speculation here. So projects that could airdrop to DYM stakers, here are a few potentials. We have Avail, which, well, that's still potential. Uh, we haven't got any confirmation on that yet, but you know, according to that post, maybe, 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 if, we have talk, if they're talking about mainnet or if they're talking about the airdrop for Dimension stakers, not sure. We've got Wormhole, which has been announced and the airdrop is already planned and the snapshot was taken. Belladow, which I mentioned in the Dimension video that I did where when you stake to their validator you might get their airdrop so I definitely have mentioned this one also I mentioned Prism as well in that same video where staking to their validator will give you eligibility to their airdrop we've got this new one network fuel which is pretty cool they haven't made a statement yet but there is a possibility of an airdrop there are areas where they work together with dimension and then we got maybe Vistara Labs, Skip Protocol and Staken so there you go that's a nice list that just kind of sums it up
of things that we might be looking forward to. Staying in the Cosmos ecosystem, we're going to talk a little bit about Injective, and I've become a little bit of a Injective ninja of late. My holdings don't reflect it, but I've definitely been interacting with the network a bit and also using DeFi and following the project pretty closely. I think there's a lot of potential for this, and I think this might be like a Solana for the coming cycle in the still get crazy price moves to the upside. It's really fast. It's really cheap. It's just that things need to be built out, but I'm airdrop farming via trading on Helix at the moment, and... We have about 52% of the supply currently staked, which is pretty impressive. Half of the supply has been staked at the moment. 5 million injective is burned through weekly auctions. That's about 5, almost 6% of supply burnt. And we have a lot of transactions. So things are definitely happening on the chain. It's something to put worth watching if you are not. I mentioned in the last video, we had some integration potentially with Phantom. We have a new wallet, Gem Wallet, that looks to be wanting to work with injective as well. Quant, surprise snapshot for Quant taken. And and Mito Finance. Mito's Discord server is now open for all community members. And Mito Finance is doing a bit of a countdown at the moment. They got three days left. I think it's probably two days now because that was yesterday. So if you are in Injective, then this is something definitely worth watching out for. And you got other projects that are posting their stats as well, like Dojo Swap, Jazz 19 tokens listed, a few launch pads, airdrops plus four coming up, and a $35 million TVL USD TVL milestone, which is not a lot of money admittedly, but hey, they, they're coming along, right? As far as price goes for Injective, I mentioned in the last video that I've bought some. We've got Kyle Dupes from Crypto Banter posting here, a potential bull flag, and I would probably measure it from here because I look at things in steps using Elliott Wave. This would be one, this would be two, this pullback here, this would be three, this would be four, and this would be five. So that would be a, another bull flag there. And if you may want to measure bull flags, you measure the pole here and the, the flag, and then you put that pole here on the breakout, and that's what it would look like, an 88% move to the upside up to $61. So that's certainly possible if this is actually a bull flag. And I mentioned in this post that I only trade one third of my injective, and the rest I have staked because I want to farm airdrops with that because that's a thing like Talus, for example, and a few others are going to be taking snapshots for airdrops. So I'm definitely staking as much as I can and only trading a small amount to hopefully get a little extra if possible. Onto a few AI narrative tokens. We have the Dither bot that has finally released. So it's akin to the GPT-1 milestone. It's called CR1. I've been following it on Telegram and it's given a couple of okay calls, but they're kind of pump and dump. So if you do get into any of these, and I'm not recommending you do, I think it's probably worth waiting to use this. Then I recommend if you do get in, then give yourself very small targets like 100, 200%, maybe three, 400% at most. And then use like limit orders to sell that out because you run the risk of basically buying a token and then the liquidity being pulled and it just going to zero. Give you some examples. We have this 7-Eleven, which the alert came through here and then the rug was pulled immediately. This token Ducker, which this is when the alert came through right here. And then, so this is what happened. The alert came through, the price was about here. It proceeded to go up about 136% and then just got rug pulled. Duck did a little better. Uh, it was the alert went off here. It went up about 600 odd percent and then the rug was pulled on that and bull basically was just straight rug. I think it went up about 138 percent from entry and then again rug was pulled on that. So it's just actually listing a whole lot of rug pulls. So again like you, you got to get in these and get out immediately like as soon as you can. You know you sort of like dial in on your on your five minute chart or something like that. Have some sort of entry and exit strategy because it's still learning right it's it's ai it needs to be trained so it's just giving a bunch of rug pulls at the moment so yeah trade these at your own risk still on ai we're going to discuss grt the crap which is part of the ai narrative look at this craziness this is uh this has just gone crazy over the last couple of days so ever since sunday at least according to utc plus 11 so i guess this would be saturday the graph has gone up 43 percent which is not insane but that that is quite a lot this has gone kind of parabolic i mean look at this these little moves move and then it's just gone poof, shot off and i'm in this one at the moment and i've got a bot that's currently trading this and it's up about 150 percent using the super trend on the Hikanashi chart so i'm pretty happy with that at the moment and lastly i mentioned in the last video the pepe bot so i figured i would quickly show how it's getting its signals it uses the parabolic SAR, which is the parabolic stop and reverse so the way this works is once price closes so even if there's a wick past this line here once it closes or once it wicks and, and, and moves past this this line here then it 
flips and goes up and it finds the closest structure high or closest structure low as the top and then it comes down at least in the short case and then the long case it flips finds the most previous structure low which it says was here but well i guess it was like right there i suppose just a little bit below that and then now it comes up so that's in a long at the moment and let's have a look at the strategy tester has some really nice moves and then it gives a bit back then a nice move then it gives a bit back then it goes on a nice move here really nice here then it just gets sort of stuck going sideways and it actually hasn't made any profit since october last year so yeah that's not, obviously not the best so yeah um i'm guessing that's probably because we just haven't had any really nice trends but if you can zoom out we can see sometimes you do get these really nice trends so you get like really nice trend really nice trend choppy sideways so that gives that back gives a little bit back there and then nice trend gives a little back and really nice trend but this has been pretty choppy look at this so this is where it's like sort of it, you know it makes a little bit of profit makes a little bit of profit makes a little bit of profit gives back gives back gives back a little bit of profit break even decent profit and decent so we'll have to see that like, if we start getting some nicer trends on pepe then this will look a lot better but at the moment pepe is just kind of going sideways so anyway that kind of sums that up also just quickly i thought i would mention that ethereum hit 2900 which is not just a 52 week high but it's the highest that ethereum has been since the bear market so ethereum's doing pretty well and again i've just got a bot trading ethereum at the moment it's captured some really nice moves got this long gave a little back with this short got this long gave a little back with the short and now it's in a long again but uh, it's just a bot i just let it do its thing and just i just ignore it <laughs> but uh but yeah anyway ethereum's doing really well so if you're holding ethereum which i hope you do and any balance portfolio should have ethereum exposure then this is looking really nice and the flow on effect is any ethereum ecosystem coins like gmx have been doing really well as well mnt seems some pretty nice moves in the last day that's mantle and arb is looking not bad at all it's actually gone up about you know 20 20 odd percent so i'd love to see it anyway that's all for today's video so if you liked it then please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this and let me know in the comments below what kind of topics you liked in the video or what you would like covered in the next video i'm happy to take any and all requests so keep safe out there this is cryptolytics signing out have a good one